not r squared as I will potentially write at some point, but just r. What's the O in the R next to the energy? All right. The O is for object. Oh. P is for planet. And I is initial speed. Okay. So it's launched at some initial speed here. Oh, and that's the initial distance. So those are my two parts. So if I gave you the values, you'd be able to plug and jump. And it's going to be the exact same thing on this side, except for it's not the initial, it's the final. The final squared minus big G, massive object, massive planet, over R final. So it's just sort of recapping. This is my initial kinetic. This is my initial potential energy. My final kinetic, final energy. Now typically in a, an energy problem, once you get the equation set up, you then figure out what, can we, what is equal to zero. So, in this case, I will change it slightly. What's going to be close enough to zero for us to go, yeah, good enough, we're going to call it zero. So what happens when you, you throw an object in the air? As soon as it leaves your hand, what happens? Gravity's pulling it down. Say it again? Gravity's pulling it down. Okay, and what does that mean in terms of the, the object itself? What does gravity pulling it down cause the object to do? Fall towards the... Not immediately. Oh. Eventually, yes, yes. but... Maybe it slow down? That's what I'm going for. Yeah, it causes it to slow down. Same thing happening here. As soon as I launch it, as soon as it, because there's no rocket boosters on this thing, as soon as I launch it, the thing starts slowing down. How slow is it going to get? When it stops? If it stops, it's going to turn around, and we don't want it to stop. What we're trying to find here is the escape speed. How fast do we need to shoot this thing so it never comes back? I have a question. Yes. So if it's slowing down, but it's also losing like fuel, that would make its mass look less. We, I always picture when I do this, I always picture we're shooting a rock or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's no, not rocket, but rocket, so boulder. There's no propulsion, it's not losing fuel as it goes. So it, it gets set at some speed at this point, and at that point, it's on its own. Yeah, if this were a rocket problem, that'd be much more complicated. So would it be the gravitational pull? Well, it still does have gravitational pull. Yep. Wouldn't the kinetic energy be zero? Or? Why? I mean, it loses its, well, I mean, energy. Not as much momentum. Okay. And a couple of things in there. Uh, I probably won't hit everything that you just said. Now, the first thing you said before was that it stops. And I said it doesn't stop because if it stopped, it would turn around. Yeah, for some reason, I thought you meant if you threw it up like that, it would come back down. Oh, uh, yeah. And for anything I can do personally, yes, you're right. But for this problem, we're getting it so it does not return. But it does start slowing down immediately. Now the rate at which, <clears throat> excuse me, the rate at which it slows down is not constant. It's not like it's losing 10 meters per second every second. It might start out that way, but eventually it's gonna be losing less and less each second. But the speed gets incredibly small. 
So it doesn't stop. So it's always going that way, but the speed is so small, and plus you're taking a small number and squaring it, potentially even smaller. This is approximately zero. So just get the kinetic energy would just get smaller as it goes up? It gets small enough for us for a physicist to go, close enough. Yeah. The math people will look at it and go, it's never zero. Physicists go, sure, whatever. We're not gonna count it. <clears throat> well, there's one other thing, there's gonna be one other term that's gonna go to zero. <clears throat> Just the initial? Which initial? The kinetic two. Sorry? The kinetic two, wouldn't it just be zero as well? I mean, We're assuming that the object's initial speed is just after launch. So oh. it, it it's not zero to begin with, otherwise that that would be like So it would be the potential. Which potential? I got two of them. Then uh, That one's zero? Yeah. Why? Just uh, by process of elimination? Well, it, yeah, that and also um, it's the initial speed just after launch. Right. We're not finding the final. We're measuring it. Well, I don't know. I feel like you're almost there. So you're saying it's going up and, and it's not going to come back down. So we're, I mean, there's no potential energy. It's just... The uh, still potential energy, it still takes work to get it there. If it takes work to get it there, there's potential energy we're or not, conservative work being done. We're not finding the final of it. We're getting to it in the middle. Okay. I, yeah, I'm still going to go with you're almost there. Okay. A fraction. Everybody loves fractions. Okay. Except for Brianna. Everyone else loves fractions. <clears throat> Whatever the top is right there, it's some constant. The mass, mass of the object doesn't change. The mass of the planet is not changing. Big G is a constant. It's in the name description of it. The only variable here is R. Thus, I have, that's where I've got my I and my F. So if I take a fraction, uh, let's make it so that it's the dividing makes it a little bit simpler. All right, so let's say that the top equals 24, and there's gonna be something in it where it works. Divided by two, what is that equal to? And then we make that denominator bigger, what is it equal to? <laughs> Whoever said six, you're ahead of your time. There's the six. 24 over six? Four. So as the denominator gets bigger, what's happening to the fraction? So if I'm shooting something so that it never returns, how big is that going to get? Infinitely big, right? Close enough. So whatever my numerator is, this denominator is going to be huge. Is the R the radius? What is that? What is the R of the denominator? Distance. From? Oh. The two centers. Hunter? The two centers. Yes, distance between the two centers. So it's the distance between the center of the object and the center of the planet. So this is going to go to zero because R is getting huge. Zero. Say it again? What's the point of writing that then if they're both zero? What's wrong with them both being zero? I don't know. I just meant like the other side of it. Okay, so it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So what we have here is because my right hand side is zero, we got this one half mv initial squared, a massive object, equals, I'm just going to bring this over to the other side. Big G, massive object, massive planet, over my initial 
center to center distance. Are you just from your earlier comment just a moment ago? Are you disturbed by the fact that it looks like I'm saying there's no energy in the object? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I just didn't see it. Like, I don't understand. It was. I don't know what I was trying to say. Really, because you had written it out and then they're both zero. So. Yeah, it, it's. This is not minus zero on one side of the equation. Whatever it is. Now, mass of the object, you got that on both sides, so I can just get rid of that. I want to, I'm trying to get to the VI, I'm trying to figure out what that initial speed is. So I can multiply by two. And I know some of you look at the math and you might be thinking, uh, and others hopefully not, but we're almost to where I'm trying to get. So I multiply by two, so I got a two, big G, mass of planet over, what is the RI? initial distance. What is the initial distance? Would it be from the planet center to, sorry, please reply. Uh, <laughs> planet center to the, where it first launches? Yeah, and I'm launching it from the surface. Yeah. So it's just the radius of the planet. Mm -hmm. So radius of the planet. So my initial speed, in order for this thing to be launched and never return, the formula is square root, because I'm trying to undo the square. Wait, what happened to the half? Or did you just get rid of it? I multiplied by two, that's why the two showed up right oh. here. Oh, oh, I didn't do that one. So from here to here, multiply by two, from here to here, square root. <laughs> All right, so we have a formula here. Now it's plug and chug. Let's say it's Earth. What is the escape speed for Earth? So I have the square root of 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th divided by radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. People will be kind enough to do the calculation. I got 11,181 or 82. I'm just rounding up. So 11,182 units. Probably meters per second. Yes. They told me I had an error. I still can't figure out how to do that, the P or whatever. Um, All right. During, during the break, let's make sure that... I don't know, my calculator's not that good. I got 11,270.6. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. I know it's 11,000 something, so that... So I can't tell you which one it is. I got Chansey's answer. You got the 182? Yeah. <laughs> Did you round off one of these, or maybe you flipped... Look, two numbers. Is it 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th? Yes. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th? Yes. Over 6.38 times 10 to the 6th? Yes. Oh. And a 2. 
All right, well, it's in this ballpark. So if I could launch something off the, off the Earth at a little over 11 kilometers a second, assuming it doesn't hit anything, it will never return. 10 kilometers a second, it's eventually going to come back. <clears throat> so that is escape speed. Questions before we bring in black holes? All right, so the question is, if there's a maximum speed, what are the implications of that? And that's when black holes come into it. Just trying to get to that formula over there. Actually, we'll take that formula right there. In classical physics, there was not necessarily a, a maximum speed. The, there were attempts to try to, well, to try to, to try to find out the speed of light. Galileo had an experiment where he tried to find the speed of light, where he got a certain distance away and he had a, a lab assistant at a, on another hill. He was on the hill and they would flash lights. They'd take a light, they'd flash, flash it, the other person would flash it back and they'd time how long it took. Then they went to a greater distance and did the same thing, figuring that their physical reactions would be about the same. Calculate that out and you get the speed of light. Human reaction time is not that consistent. And what he concluded was, if light is not instantaneously fast, it is very, very fast. It would be another, I think, 200 years? before they finally got an experimental value of the speed of light. And then in early 1900s, there was actual mathematical evidence that showed that speed of light was an actual maximum speed. And then later on, some theorists came up with this idea that it's just the barrier. Anything that starts below the speed of light will not get to the speed of light. Anything that starts faster than the speed of light will not go to below the speed of light. So it's sort of a cutoff. So the symbol for speed of light typically is the letter C. It's approximately three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. There is an exact value. What are the chances who it has written down here? He takes it up more decimal places, but he doesn't have the exact value there. And I did not scribble it into the margin. So if that is the maximum speed, let's take a look at our planet. So what I'm going to do is I want to figure out what is the radius, so I'm going to solve for radius, what does the radius of the Earth need to be so that the escape speed is the speed of light? In other words, since nothing that starts below the speed of light can get to the speed of light, then it will never escape. So all I'm going to do, I've got two fractions, I can always flip stuff across the diagonal. So the radius of a black hole is just equal to 2 times g times mass of the black hole divided by the speed of light squared. So just instead of vi, I wrote in c. So the radius of the Earth, if the Earth is to be a black hole, is 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass. I'm going to assume that the Earth has the exact same mass as it is. Somehow it gets crushed into a small space. One fourth divided by three times 10 to the eighth squared. 
What do we get? My calculator put out 0 0.00886368869. Wait, 0 0. 0088636889. I got that as well. Units? Uh, Is it meters per second? Went too far. Use the meter. I think you just said meters. Yeah, it's a radius. If you double it, it'll be a diameter. So if the Earth, if we took the entire Earth and shrunk it down to roughly the distance between my two fingernails there, the Earth would become a black hole. What about students all the way? What if it's like an inch? If, sorry, say it again? What if you did like an inch? So what is it then? Oh, if the Earth shrunk down to the to a diameter of an inch? Yeah, like it's not quite a black hole. What, what is it then? Incredibly dense material. Okay. Things could possibly escape it, but probably we don't have, we would not have the capability of launching anything at that speed, other than small particles. All right, so that's a little more, so a diameter of about 1.7 centimeters. Now, there's absolutely no reason for the Earth to collapse in on itself, based on current theories. No planet should ever get crushed down to that size. Suns, on the other hand, could, and so, or stars, I guess I 